Hey there, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com and if you've ever wondered how much blue light your iPhone emits, then stick around because I'm going to find out in this video. So if you've been in the biohacking space for a while or maybe you've been uh, reading some of my articles over at alexfergus.com or perhaps you're just new to uh, sleep improvements, you may have come across the connection between blue light expo exposure and sleep. So I won't get into the nitty gritty details in this video because like I said, I have written about it and I'll put some links to the articles below. But in a nutshell, blue light, in particular a certain range of wavelengths in the blue light spectrum, suppresses melatonin. And melatonin is known as the sleep hormone, though it's better not, it's, though a better term would be uh, the dark hormone because upon the body experience in darkness, then melatonin is released. So if you're looking to improve your sleep and of course your health, you, what you want to do is, is minimize blue light exposure to the body and in particular the eye in the evenings and, and close to bed. And that's why you've probably seen all these new glasses, the orange and red lens glasses. Uh, you've probably seen new apps and, and software features on your phone and, and laptops. And you've probably even seen the, the light bulbs that companies are now selling. And I'll put links to all of these products below so you can go check them out yourself. But what I want to do in this video, I don't want to get into all those products because I'll do that later and I've got some upcoming reviews with some of these products so be sure to subscribe to see this. What I want to do instead is look at what I think is probably the uh, most critical device that could potentially be impacting your sleep and suppressing uh, melatonin and that's the phone, a uh, smartphone. Chances are you're using this right up to when you go to sleep or if not, you, if you're not using it in bed, you're probably still using it in the minutes prior to going to bed, right? So the impact that this one device can have on our sleep is, is quite a lot, it's huge. I mean, if you've got the best light bulbs and you're dimming all the rooms and um, you know, you're not watching TV and that, chances are you're still gonna look at your phone right before bed. The cool thing is, Apple have incorporated their, I believe it's night shift mode, uh, which does lower the blue light in this device. And I'm also going to show you a neat hack to uh, further improve that blue light uh, mitigation on this device. So be sure to hang around for that at the end of the video. So what I'm going to do is I've got my spectrometer here, which tests multiple things such as power radiance, uh, light irradiance, but it also shows you a breakdown of all the light that is being emitted from a particular source, such as a light bulb or an iPhone or a red light therapy panel, which is typically what I use this for. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to set my phone on, on various settings, daytime setting, max brightness, lower brightness. I'm going to enable the night shift mode and change the brightness settings there as well. And I'm also going to show you my neat hack to even further reduce the blue light exposure. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the camera down here. We're going to have a look at the laptop, which is connected to my spectrometer. We're going to Put the sensor in front of the, the phone screen and see what wavelengths are emitted. Um, I've turned all the lights off in the room, so we only have natural light. It is half past 12 in winter time here, so it's only natural light. There's no background light, no, no artificial blue light in the room other than the devices, but we'll, we'll do our best to minimize them. Uh, and I'm also going to refer to a really good um, article at jimbered.com. Again, I'll put a link to this below. And this article is called, Why Do We Block Blue Light? A Simplified Explanation. It is a really, really good article if you're new to blue light or, or you do want to dive into more of the technical, um, technical know-how around blue light, as in what wavelength is the most damaging, not only to our eyes, but also from a melatonin suppressant point of view. So I'll put a link to that below and I'm also gonna pull that up on screen. All right, let's get started. All right, so first up, I have my iPhone 12 mini, yeah? Um, we've got brightness set to max. We have all the settings off. We have true tone off, uh, night shift is currently not on. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the spectrometer and we're gonna test to see how it performs. Okay, so let's test this now. Cool, and straight away, you can see we've got a pretty good reading there. So that's all I need to see. Now, let's see what this shows on screen. So remember, this is for the iPhone, full brightness, true tone off. Now we have a peak here at 400, 458, and you can see that blue, light, blue range down there, 458. And then you also have another peak here in the, the green-yellow, and then another peak here in the red. And the reason why you see these three peaks is um, the colors are obviously combined to create the colors we need on the screen. 
The other figure to note is <coughs> the power radiance here, which is 3.5 microwatts at centimeter squared for that net, for that particular wavelength, for 458. So what does that actually mean? Well, if we pull up the Gemberate article, we know that melatonin suppression peaks at 464 nanometers, and the main range is between 440 through to about 470. Now, the iPhone was showing a peak of 458, which is pretty much smack bang uh, in the middle of this. So we're just looking just off, off the peak of 460. So pretty much what we can tell from this data is having the iPhone on full brightness with no settings uh, enabled like True Tone or anything like that, we're getting a lot of melatonin suppressing light coming into the eyes. Not good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go over and we're going to tr turn on True Tone and uh, see how that changes things. Actually, before we enable True Tone, what I want to do real quick is I want to drop the brightness down and see if that changes anything. So let's put the brightness down to half and we will test the light there. What I'm expecting to see is the same wavelengths but less irradiance, less power. Okay, so let's have a look. What has happened here? We still see that peak at 458 nanometers, which is exactly the same. But you'll notice up here, the power, the radiance has dropped down quite a lot. It is now 1.1 microwatts per centimeter squared, which is actually a third lower than the peak at 3.5 for full power, for full brightness. So that's good because the thing is, when it comes to the melatonin suppressant, there's a couple of things you want to factor in. Um, the light itself is the main thing, but also how bright that light is. You know, if you walk into a room full of blue light or, or white light or any other light, it's going to have a lot more of an impact than a tiny little LED shining on you. Saying that, there has been research showing that a small LED strapped to the back of your knee and taped over had a melatonin suppressant effect. And this control for the placebo effect because some people had the tape on them and the light but the light wasn't working they had no idea if it was on or off because it was all sealed up so saying that really the main thing we're looking at is this number not necessarily this but hey it is nice to know that you are dropping the power output which is obviously common sense now let's have a look what happens when we enable true tone okay so we're going to do this at a hundred percent brightness with true tone enabled okay the peak is still, if we see this on screen here, the peak is still at 458. Irradiance is actually higher, 3.9, effectively 4. Previously it was 3.5. Um, but what we're seeing is we're seeing a little bit more light here in the red and, um, well, in the red and yellow zone. So if I um, do a live reading... So pretty much with True Tone enabled, you're still getting the same peak in the blue light, you're just getting more of this red. So to be honest, True Tone, enabling True Tone on the phone doesn't really make any difference in terms of suppressing melatonin. All right, now we are going to look at night shift mode. And remember, I'm gonna show you a really neat hack that I'm hoping and thinking will dramatically lower this blue light, but we'll do that at the end. All right, let's go enable night shift mode. So. Night shift mode, we're going to manually enable that, and we're going to go f full power. Let's start it down the bottom, we'll do less warm, middle, and then more warm. We're not going to factor in brightness anymore, because that, we know now that doesn't change. The wavelengths, it only changes the power output. So, let's test uh, less warm with night shift on. Night shift is on, pretty much we don't see any difference at all. Night shift enabled on less warm and we still see that massive peak at 458 but what is happening though is the power is a little bit lower 2.9 microwatts compared to three and a half so that is good let's bump it up now to the middle setting oh all right now we're getting some interesting data so this is as you can see in the middle your night shift mode and guess what's happened? The peak wavelength is now over here, 620. Look what's happened to the blue light. It has dramatically dropped down. There's less blue light, 
than the red and orange and in fact now we're getting a bit of green in the middle there so you're seeing a, a peak there at five, 523 now remember when we look at the Gemberad article we can see that melatonin the peak melatonin suppressing range ranges from 445 through to 447 so that's way down here okay but blue light does extend all the way to 570 which is around here so you are getting some suppressing effects through here totally uh, uh, mitigate any melatonin suppressing all the light would be in this range and there'd be none through here and I'm going to show you how, how you can do that using your phone very soon but before we do that we need to test one more setting and that is night shift mode on the full setting on the more warm setting so we're going to do that now let's drag that right across and you can see the color change in the screen there it goes to a more of an orange orange color which of course is what we'd expect when we drop out the blue light all right let's do a couple of renews yes and look what's happened here <clears throat> once we get this back on the screen remember this was this is with night shift mode on 100 percent and you can see the blue light and even the green here is dropping right down and the peak light again it's at that 620 it hasn't changed the the wavelengths here in this range but it doesn't matter what we're looking at is this and there is much less light coming through here uh, in fact the radiance is 0.6 okay so remember at 50 percent brightness on, on without true tone and without night shift mode we were still at one and a half we're getting double the amount of blue light here so with a full brightness with full brightness my, my brightness is right up here and night shift on 100 percent we're getting a lot less blue light in fact let, i know i said i wouldn't but let's test this let's drop the brightness down to 50 percent and we'll see what the blue light radiance actually we'll note the green as well so at the moment we're at 0 0.6 for the blue and 1.6 for the green so this is that 50 percent brightness so blue light is look at that it's even dropped it even more it was 0 0.6 so it's dropped at 50 percent and then as we go over to the green we were at 1.6 before we're at 0 0.6 wow so that does it does make a change so tell the light, before I say maybe we don't need to worry too much about brightness, but I think we do. I think we really do factor them both as. And because effectively what is happening here with the tr night shift mode, all it's really doing, there's still some blue light, right? But it's just dramatically lowered the intensity of that blue light. Uh, and you can also do the same thing just by simply dropping, dropping the brightness. So in a nutshell, hopefully this has given you some answers. If you're trying to minimize blue light exposure, the simplest thing you can do on your phone is to enable night shift and put it to the max more warm setting. I personally have mine scheduled. I have it scheduled uh, from sunset to sunrise. It's just simple that way. I used to have it going all the time. Uh, you know, I just put a custom schedule and I put from four o'clock to 3.59 as you can see on there so it was going all the time except for that one minute in between um, but that was kind of annoying sometimes you know I'd show people a photo and they'd be like what's up with your screen and you didn't really need it on during the day it's more for eye health and I'm, I don't want to look at eye health in this video in fact I'm looking more at melatonin suppressing so um, instead I just used that uh, sunset sunrise to sunset sunset to sunrise mode um, but the other thing to note though is the brightness setting itself does make a big change now, if you're wondering how to enable night shift, I just go into my settings. You can search for it, or you just go down to settings, and then uh, where were we? Display and brightness, and then you've got true tone, and you've got night shift here. Boom. Now, what was the other hack I wanted to show you? All right, so to enable this last hack, what you need to do is go into your settings, go to accessibility, go to display and text size, scroll down into color filters, and then in here, we turn this on, and then we can click color tint, which is already enabled on mine, and you can change the intensity. And that's changing. You can then select the color, purple, green, whatever, but I want mine on red. And look at that, the whole screen goes red. So we're gonna, that's at full intensity, we're gonna test that real quick. All right, we're gonna test this at full brightness, and look at that. With that setting enabled, we are getting pretty much no blue or green in fact if we go down here the peak is at 458 the same peak and that's at 0 
which is massive drop off and and the blue is not much higher than that and that's at full brightness so if we drop the brightness down again it would even lower that even more and you can see all the colors coming into the red so remember you can enable that through the settings and i'm going to show you one other hack as well so be sure to say, say to the end now personally i find that a little bit too intense reading from from um Reading from a phone like that, watching videos, it's quite intense, right? It is possible if you're just reading, it's fine. But, uh, you know, watching videos or looking at an um, article that has photos in it, it can, it can be quite tricky. What I personally do is I drop the intensity down. You can drop it all the way to zero. Uh, I go, obviously zero turns it off. I go to about 80%, maybe a little bit more. Maybe that's like 90%. And that allows you, you can make out some blue light. You can see here. And the banner, if you can see that, there's a little bit of blue in there. Oh, there we go. That's a better example. You can see some blue, but it's it's very suppressed. So let's see how that handles up on the spectrometer. <laughs> Again, you can see the main concentration is all in that orange and red light. But there is a little bit down here in the blue. But it's only 0.4. It's, it's a lot lower, isn't it? Uh, and I personally find that's like the perfect compromise. You've suppressed your blue and your green by huge amounts. Uh, you can still read and make out photos and watch videos, um, but you know you're not getting that massive blue light hit. And of course, we can drop this even further because right now it's midday, so I have my brightness on full. But if I drop the brightness down, which you typically do at night, I might even go down to 20 or even 10%. That alone is going to... Again, further drop. Let's real test that real quick. So we're at like 15% brightness at about 80% intensity. So what's happening now is there's such little light coming in that yes, the peak looks so much higher, but it's all relative, right? That figure is actually a lot lower. You're seeing all this other light coming in here, which is just background light because the brightness is so low that there's actually not much light coming. So that has dropped, even though the graph has made it look, look different. So that is my neat hack. Now, you don't want to go into the settings each time and have to scroll through all options to enable this. What you can actually do is create a shortcut. Now, if you watch this, I press on the on the side a couple of times, turns it on, turns it off. Pretty cool, right? So you can actually enable that. You need to go into your display and bright, uh, brightness settings. Enable night shift from sunset to sunrise, or sunset to sunrise, and put it on the full, more warm setting. Finally go into accessibility, go to display and text, go into color filters, turn it on, set the intensity to however, oh, color tint, set it to red, set the intensity to however high you want it. I personally go about there, go back, then go all the way down to accessibility shortcut and enable that for color filters. That now allows you to double click. And with that set up, what you have now is a screen that will slowly go more orange as the day goes by and then you get closer to your bedtime. Then if you are gonna read or watch a video, watch one of my videos while you're lying in bed or you're reading an article, you can just double tap that screen and it will turn red and then be sure to drop the brightness down as well and you're doing everything you can to maximize your sleep and, and maximize melatonin suppression to the point that Personally, I don't even really bother wearing my blue blockers when I've got all this enabled because I know the light coming in, I've got all my other lights off in the room. It's so little, there's so little blue light that, hey, I, I don't even bother sometimes wearing my blue blockers. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, give me a thumbs up or a like. If you've got any questions, leave them below. I'll put some links to an article, uh, the Jim Barrett article, which goes into the science behind this. I'll also put a link to my blue light article, which I wrote many, many years ago, which is uh, still regarded as a great article for learning about how blue light impacts your sleep and your health. I'll also link to the, all the products I've mentioned, such as blue light blocking glasses or um, light bulbs and stuff that emit low blue light. Um, and I'll even whip up an article that shows you all the data we just looked at and all the steps to enable that neat red light hack that comes on at the end and how to enable the night shift mode as well. In my opinion, it's one of the simplest and easiest things you can do to help your health, help improve your health and of course your sleep. And to be honest, when you're reading your phone at night, it's not it's not too off-putting. Uh, if you get full red light, yes, it can be like, well, this, I can't re read it. But if you drop it down to that 80, 95, 90% mark, you're still getting all the benefits without too much of a visual um, impairment, let's say. So if you enjoyed this video, again, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to check out other useful health hacks. 
And um, yeah, be sure to say hi.